Hello designers, this is Angie from Raveners Design Academy. This will be my last video in 2019 before I take some time off to spend it with family and friends. Happy New Year! Hope 2020 will be a good year for Raveners and for all of you out there. I'm working on the post-production of the season's greetings render posted on Raveners Facebook and Instagram. My main focus in editing this image is to add some depth and enhance the reflections and warm tones within the image. I'll start by layering all of the render elements underneath the main render output except for the extra texture element, which will be on top because I'll use that to add a shadowy effect to edges and corners and that helps with adding more depth. This is also a shortcut to adding an ambient occlusion effect, which serves the same purpose. I'll blend the extra texture layer with the rendered image by using multiply and then blurring it out to eliminate unnecessary sharp edges using Gaussian Blur. Next, I'll start using the Material ID Render Element as a selection guide to select the white rug and fix it up a bit. To duplicate or copy a selection to its own layer, just pr press Ctrl J on your keyboard. This also applies to duplicating a whole layer. Once I've isolated the texture applied to the rug, I'll fiddle with the layer's opacity and fill to restore some of the white back. It's always a good idea to rename and group your layers to keep your workspace tidy. This in turn saves a lot of time you can spend confused or fixing mistakes. Moving on, I'll enhance some of my reflections by using the Material ID layer to select the areas I want to edit and then copying reflections from the Reflection Elements layer. I'll then overlay this reflection over the main image and adjust it to fit in. I'm going to go back and forth in hiding layers so I can check my progress and see what else I can use to further enhance my final outcome. This may look like too much work or that I know exactly what I want to do, but it's the complete opposite. Practice makes perfect, guys. The more you do this, the more you'll get a hang of post-production and the better your results will be. The black graphite or stucco looks a little washed out in my final render. So I'll fix that by selecting it through the Material ID layer and then copying the shadows from the raw light render element to darken it up a bit. I'll blend it by using Multiply and then fix its opacity and fill to blend it in further. I wanted to select the bronze horse, but the selection tool was selecting other objects along with it, because the black and the dark green are very similar. I'll fix that by adjusting the selection wants tolerance so it's more sensitive to the dark green. Now I'll just add more shadows to it to give the sculpture more depth using the same technique I've been using. While speaking of depth, I'm selecting a few random objects, specifically the ones with a black material ID, and give them a bit of more depth so not all objects are too similar when it comes to shadow and light. With the eraser tool, I'll remove the parts of the layer that affect glass, that's just unrealistically dark. While I'm at it, I'll further enhance this glass bottle and tumblers on the coffee table. Moving on to the lights, let's make them look a little less artificial. Using the usual method of selecting an object didn't work, so I'll just use brushes instead. I created a blank layer to add light effects to and used the eyedrop tool to get the color of lights from the scene itself.
Using a custom brush set, I painted light rays so that I can blend them in and fade them out. Using a native soft round brush, I'll also layer some light halos around the chandelier bulbs. Layering with different brush sizes mimics the way light radiates from a light bulb more accurately. Using a Gaussian blur filter, I'll remove any harsh edges around the light rays so it'll end up looking more real and natural. I'll do the same thing to this table lamp over here. I need to highlight the fact that it's emitting light because there are no obvious rays on surrounding surfaces like the one in the left corner. I'll also try to enhance the light from the candles using the same technique used for the bulbs. The tree and garland are looking a bit dull, so they needed a bit of attention as well. I selected them from the layer, copied them to a new layer, and now I'll just adjust them to look a bit more alive. If you've noticed, the sheer curtains are looking more on the gray side compared to the rug. I'll fix that by selecting them, copying over their selection from the raw light layer, and then blending everything using lighten and adjusting the opacity and fill. I wasn't 100% satisfied with what I did, so while pressing the control key, I clicked the layer with the curtains and then used that selection to isolate the curtains from the render. I needed to brighten them up a bit. Now that everything else is edited, the shadow and light on the walls are giving the whole place a bit of an odd feel. They don't fit in anymore, so I used that to brighten up the whole image and fix that. The glass of the second floor balcony needed to be brightened up too. So does the glass surface of the coffee table and the fireplace. I included the terrace doors, but that just made everything outside a bit too bright to my liking, so I erased that. Also, the leather chairs are looking too washed out now. 
I'll fix that by copying them on a new layer and then blending them in by using multiply and adjusting the fill. You can see that after editing one object, another starts looking a bit wonky and needs fixing. This is how post-production works for me, a series of edits to multiple objects in a single scene that ends up enhancing the image as a whole. Now that everything is edited to its best, I'll duplicate everything and then merge the copies into a single image. The reason I'm doing this is that I'll add a filter to tie everything up. This filter will also manipulate the overall coloring of this image into a warmer ambience. And I'm keeping the copies, or the originals, as backup. My favorite filter set is Google's Nick Collection. Thanks to Mintran for introducing this filter collection in one of his videos. But first, I need to sharpen the image. Because I use V-Ray's denoiser option, it tends to make the image a bit blurred. Sharpening the image gets rid of that blur and upgrades the image's visual quality. And that's that. As a temporary parting gift, this model is available for download indefinitely, so make sure to check the description of any of Ravener's social media posts for the link to download, as well as the description of this video. The zip file contains all of the proxies, texture maps, custom V-Ray material, and render outputs, plus the PSD files used for post-production. There are also light cache files that you can load up into V-Ray for faster rendering. Thank you for watching, and have a happy new year!